40 minutes or so, right in the, in the rain area. We got out of it uh, about 20 minutes ago, but the, the astronauts apparently did not. The, the helicopter's there now, moving alongside the starboard. We'll be circling uh, around our bow, I would assume. You can see the... the you, you, you can see them now, uh, the uh, flickering lights now, they're, they're separating. One is, one is going F. We're looking for number 55. If we can spot it, we can't spot that number from here. One of those two, now they have split. One is moving over to the port side. One is starboard. I would assume uh, the one moving port would be the uh, the one carrying the, the three astronauts. The lights blinking, coming in at a low level. Apparently, he's not going to do any dallying out here. Those men are coming right on board. There'll be no swing around at all. The chopper is coming in on the bow side. John Dancy, uh, who has moved over to the port, or Bill Lindsay. Can uh, you see the chopper? Yes, this is Bill Lindsay on the flight deck. We can see helicopter number 55 approaching from the uh, stern. However, we've just been advised that this is the Photo Hilo coming in first. We'll tell you that for sure when we see where it lands. Now it's closer and we can see the number. It, it is number 67 and that is the Photo Hilo. This is the ship which carried the pool photographers out to the recovery area so they could get pictures of the actual recovery of the astronauts from the hovering helicopter. Number 55, the one we are waiting for, is now approaching the ship. This is the Recovery 3 ship, piloted by Commander Edward Scooby, Lieutenant Junior Grave Donald Broderick of Lynn, Massachusetts, as co-pilots, Airman Charles Edmonds of Fair Hope, Alabama, and Airman Dale Everett of Andreas, Pennsylvania, the other crew members. Now, number 55 is approaching across the bow of the Essex, moving off to the port side. It will swing around and come here to landing spot four. And the decks of the Essex are rapidly filling with people. Awaiting the recovery of the helicopter should be down in just a very few minutes. Uh, standing also on the flight deck are the members of the official Navy greeting party. They're headed by Rear Admiral Thomas D. Davies, the commander of Carrier Division 20. Captain Richard Palkovic, his chief of staff. And Captain John A. Harkins the commanding officer of the Essex. This is the first astronaut recovery mission for the Essex, the oldest carrier still in service in the United States Navy. It also is the last to cruise for the commanding officer here, Captain Harkins. Now to John Dancy on the bridge. We're looking down on the bridge. Rear Admiral Davies, Commander Carus, the executive officer. The helicopter will now be circling uh, over the uh, almost over the heads of these men uh, standing here outside the Everyone riding us uh, down on the flight deck. We see the helicopter now just off the port side of the uh, ship, about 20 feet off the ship. inside. A red carpet is being rolled out now. Stairs have been placed up to the door of the uh, spacecraft. Dr. Donald Sulkin, the leader of the recovery team, walks up to the door now, waves inside to the men. The 
loaders will be shut down, and then the red carpet will be rolled out. The carpet is light enough to be uh, picked up and blown around by the rotors. There they go. They're being shut down now. The red carpet is being rolled out, showing evidence of uh, the rain showers that we've had here earlier today, but nevertheless in good condition. The astronauts there in the door. Walter Shira on the left, Don Isley there, and Walt Cunningham. There's their NASA flight suits. Uh, the suits are wet, showing uh, some evidence of the rain shower, which has been going on outside. And the band is playing now. Anchors away. All four men, all three men have 11-day uh, beards, as we told you before. Their hair is wet. They're walking along the red carpet now. Cunningham is wearing glasses now. Now to Bill Lindsay. This is Bill Lindsay down on the flight deck, and there is Rear Admiral Davies shaking hands with Commander Shira. Now it's Captain Harkins and then uh, Captain Palkovic. Uh, Commander Shira is followed next by Don Isley, then astronaut Walter Cunningham. And they all look in exceedingly good shape. They're all smiling, laughing. There's some uh, grasping of hands and grasping of shoulders, and I'm sure some apologies for the weather in which they've arrived. There are going to be no speeches here on the flight deck, it appears. The three astronauts already are down off the platform after the brief handshaking ceremony. Now they're over posing just briefly for still photographers on the other side. In just a moment, they will go aboard the elevator here, the number two elevator. NASA people are already anxiously clapping their hands and saying, uh, let's speed it up, let's get going. And Dr. Donald Selkin, the landing recovery team leader, gives the astronauts a slight shove and off they go onto the elevator there. It looks like uh, Chief Master at Arms Hatcher is now getting the party of photographers, NASA officials, and the three astronauts. Walter Cunningham turns and waves to the crewmen who are lining the decks behind him above the flight deck here on the Essex. A crew of about eight or ten photographers still busily snapping pictures. Dr. C.J. Jernigan is with the astronauts talking to them briefly now as they disappear below deck. They go now down to the hangar deck, heading immediately for sick bay. And there you have the successful end of the Apollo 7 mission as the three astronauts come aboard the flight deck of the carrier Essex. O'Brien is... I'll leave you. Three of them walking now down along uh, the middle of the hangar deck level, a walk of about 40 yards. Smiling thing seems to be all well with all of them. Sporting those 11-day beards we were told about now, they will bear right here. And get down into the sick bay area. And there they go. That is the last we will see of them for several hours. This evening we will be dining with the astronauts. Down now into the sick bay level. And Apollo 7 successful. This is Richard O'Brien down on the hangar deck level. the three astronauts are aboard the carrier and have gone into the sick bay. Walter Shira, Don Isley, Walter Cunningham, looking perfectly normal except for an 11-day growth of beard. And I would suppose one of the first things they'll talk to the doctors about uh, would be their ears and whether they experienced any discomfort on their way down. As we've been hearing for 11 days now, they developed head colds right after they got into orbit and um, were never able to completely shake them and were apprehensive that on re-entry with the changing pressure and the buildup of pressure and the... Uh, this is the picture in Mission Control in Texas. It is uh, live. This is what's happening now. They're standing around congratulating each other and themselves. The gentleman in the center there, just about to take a puff off a cigarette, I think, is uh, Alan Shepard. 
And Donald Slayton, uh, who head of astronaut training, is um, in the picture. And Dr. Gilruth of NASA is there. There was a tradition for a time that they all fired up cigars. Uh, there seem to be quite a few cigars in this gathering, too. This room has been manned around the clock for the last 11 days by people uh, sitting at consoles, charting this, that, or the other thing having to do with the flight, feeding information. Well, we're talking about Essex. Floated over throughout the Essex, where it'll be lifted aboard. And eventually we'll wind up in the hands of the NASA people for detailed examination. It's full of information of one kind or another, which they want. As you see, it was a clear, brilliant white when it took off from Cape Kennedy. As you see, the sides of it now are splotched. The line is clearly visible now from the deck of the Essex to the spacecraft. You get a very good view of the spacecraft there. As reported earlier, it shows no damage from its uh, 17,500 mile an hour flight through space from the 1,200 or so degree temperatures of the launch, although at that time it's covered by a, a shield, uh, or it's 3,000 degrees of temperature experienced in re-entry. The honeycombed uh, ablative shield on the blunt end of the spacecraft absorbs that heat and uh, partially burns away. It leaves a great shard uh, bottom of the spacecraft.